She, she's a pure scorer, and you can't give her space. And, and she's experienced out there. Um, and I thought it showed in crucial moments. Um, you know, give her any kind of room, and, and she's, she's going to knock it down. But she was big for him down the stretch, no question about it. Coach, talk about the um, confidence that you have at the point position for Angel Hayden. And obviously, we are all very familiar with her. But what have you seen her progress during your year with her? Yeah, one of the things with Angel, I think, is um, she's she's been through a Big 12 season, and I think you can see that experience level number one. And she played, she logged a lot of minutes uh, last year. And then also with with her, um, we're we're very comfortable with her her being able to to handle the physicality. She's certainly not as fast as Chrislin, but she handles it by use of her body, and I think uh, in her decision making. Uh, for us is solid. So we're very comfortable having her out there running the point, shooting when she's open, and she's one of our better defenders as well. A couple of big buckets by Chrislyn late in that game to really keep you all in it and help extend you all's lead. Talk about her progress these last um, couple of weeks. Yeah, well, she just keeps growing. And I think it's, you know, credit and testament to her because she's she's very coachable. And that's what makes her – that's what allows her to continue to improve because defenses are always trying to take something away from her and she keeps finding a way and making a way. And it's very impressive for someone um, who is a freshman number one and someone who is not necessarily as tall and big as the people that are guarding her night in and night out. Tough closer loss for you guys. Do you feel like this one was closer than the others? Do you feel like your team's like making progress toward, towards getting there and winning these conference games late that are close? Well, you know, it's certainly frustrating. Um, you want to you want to come out on top, um, and it's different things. It's not the same thing that's happening. So, you know, we just talked about that. Kind of fix one thing, and something else pops up, and uh, we're going to keep fixing them until until we finally come out on top. And that's our job as coaches, and and um, we're going to keep working on those things. But uh, again, rebounding was kind of a, a big letdown for us, and it's not typically a letdown for us, and that that hurt us down the stretch. When you look at the way that Kansas State was able to compete behind the arc with Texas, I mean, that's what won them the game is their ability to shoot the three. How did that influence the way that you guys approached Texas? And you shot, I mean, 42% behind the arc, and you see Angel, you know, shooting the three ball, which is not typically something that you, you see from her. Well, we studied a lot their one Big 12 loss. And in their one Big 12 loss, they play, it was Kansas State. They played them all zone, which we did as well. And Kansas State hit 11 threes. We hit 12. So a lot of similarities there. Um, the big difference is um, Kansas State built that lead and they were able to sustain it. And we gave them just too many easy looks in the fourth quarter. Uh, it's not so much that a team is scoring always, but it's how they're scoring. And um, it was just it was too easy down the stretch. That's a high scoring game for us being in the 70s. Um, this year, anything in the 60s is, is a good number for us in a Big 12 game. But we got to the 70s, just disappointing that we couldn't couldn't hold them off down the stretch. Coach, how did you see the physicality from this team throughout the game? Both really actually down low, Aaron was getting banged around, just the physicality there, but also the mental toughness to you were up big, go down, you get up again, and just kind of back and forth there. How did you see the overall mental and physical toughness from your team? Again, I thought we were we were pretty consistent through about three quarters of it. And they really upped it in the fourth quarter, and uh, we were talking about that in timeouts and between quarters, and um, that's what a 12th ranked team is going to do, and we fully expected that. Again, it's it's uncharted waters. I bring up a good point of the, of the scoring differential last year. I don't know the math on that quickly, but it's over 50 points. Um, so. Certainly, tremendous progress uh, of our players, and and they're battling really, really hard. Uh, we just got to get over this final hurdle. We have an opportunity to string off some wins, hopefully in a row here during a, a nice home stretch in February. So uh, we're going to keep working, and um, we're going to eventually get some wins here. I would say they went on a run, and we let it start getting to us, and we have to handle that better. We have to increase increase our intensity at that point. It was both for Chrislin and Sydney. Early on, it felt like the threes were really falling. It wasn't really one individual person. Kind of like the team three-point shooting was there. What did you guys really see early on from the overall team three-point shooting? Uh, I felt like when everybody starts shooting the ball and they make it in, it, um, everybody else is going to follow along and they're going to start making it too. So I think that was good with, for us when we started making threes. 
yeah, we were kind of feeding off each other. I mean, I think we got some momentum. We got the crowd into it. You know, we got our feet set. We've been in the gym, and you can tell. And so it just started falling for us. Uh, Chris Lynn, does another like week under your belt, another great performance of, from you today. Does it feel like everything's kind of slowing down for you a little more as the season goes on? You get more comfortable, and everything's like adjusting well for you even better more? Absolutely, especially um, Coach been talking about um, taking care of the ball in those crucial moments. So I think I've been working on that a lot and fixing that and improving it. So I would say yes. Coach, someone you saw last year, but someone that's players. playing. Oh, just players? Yeah, just Uh, it was very f physical, especially um, getting through the screens. Um, but I think we did a very good job at that, um, just staying physical with them at those moments. So I would say we did a pretty good job. And Sid, I, I hate to, to talk about moral victories, but the last time that you guys faced Texas, the final school was 90 to 39. Can yeah. you just speak to how far in a year this group has come to just be in a position to be able to compete there in the fourth quarter with a team like Texas? Uh, this team is definitely night and day, from our chemistry to our talent to our work ethic to our culture. I mean, I think um, everything has shifted in our direction. And I mean, yeah, I'm not for moral victories. I want the victory. Um, but yeah, we're taking steps in the right direction. We're going to win one of these. So. Uh, I feel like the crowd brought was pretty electric today, more than I've ever seen it. So how were you guys kind of able to use that energy? Was it helpful of staying so tight to Texas? Oh, yeah, I think that was huge. I mean, I think feeding off the crowd and getting excited, and it was so much fun to be out there and high-fiving, and I just think the energy in the crowd really helped us and gave us a big advantage. It was very exciting. Um, just always having the crowd behind us is very exciting, and it's fun to watch, actually. Um, I just want to thank the, cro the crowd for keep coming and keep supporting us. Um, this is for both of you all. Um, it's like these last couple of games, again, getting tight in the fourth quarter and then just – other teams pulling away at that point. What do you guys need to work on to make sure that that doesn't happen uh, for conference games further on this season? I would say getting stops um, in those moments, um, taking pride in our defense more in those times, especially when we know there's 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter and we're always close in those positions. So I would think I would say getting stops and then making plays on the offensive end. And one thing we've talked a lot about is like being in the moment um, and being exactly where our feet are. And so being locked into whatever moment that we're in. And so we've been working on that mentally. I think that's huge. And like she said, you know, we got to make plays.